Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Paula Hernandez. I'm Food Project and Policy Officer at Healthcare Harm Europe. I will be moderating this webinar, uh, which actually will be my last webinar at Healthcare Harm Europe. I will soon explain uh, you the outline of today's meeting and introduce our speakers. Uh, Professor Eda Weyman, uh, Katrina Sousa and Christina Smith will be our present, present speakers. I would like to remind you that all participants are muted, uh, but if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to use the chat box or the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Um, and we will address them after the presentations. I hope uh, to have a fruitful debate about the benefits, opportunities, and challenges of adopting a healthy and sustainable approach to food provision in healthcare. So today we will present actually experiences from Austria, Germany, and Portugal in creating and implementing sustainable food strategies within healthcare that promote health and environmental sustainability. Specifically, Eda will provide some examples about how her hospital is driving more sustainable food production practices uh, with positive impact on the environment, animal welfare, community health, and local food economies. Katerina will give some tips about how healthcare facilities can increase the offer or plant-based options at healthcare to reduce food-related greenhouse gas emissions, save money, and increase the satisfaction of patients, employees, and the community at large. And finally, Christina will focus on the initiative uh, they have conducted to prevent and reduce food waste at her hospital. All these experiences pursue to inspire you to implement a sustainable food strategy that combines actions on health and uh, sustainability. But before we dive into our topic, I will give you a short introduction about who we are and what we do at Healthcare that Harm Europe. So for those who doesn't know us, we are a non-for-profit European network of hospitals, healthcare systems, healthcare professionals, bodies, local authorities, research and academic institutions, and environmental and health organizations that brings the voice of healthcare professionals to the European policy debate on different topics. These topics, as you can see here, uh, are mainly about the impact of pharmaceuticals on the environment and antimicrobial resistance, climate smart healthcare, the importance to access to healthy and sustainable food services while reducing food waste, and circular healthcare, which collect the previous areas of safe management of chemicals and sustainable procurement. We work on these areas closely with our diverse network uh, of more than 100 members across the European region. However, this is part of GJHH, Global Green and Healthy Hospitals, that is made by more than 1,450 members in 70 two countries, representing the interest of over 43,000 hospitals, healthcare centers worldwide. I will strongly encourage you all to join this community if you are not part of it yet. And now I would like to pass the ball to Professor Eda Wiman, medical doctor at the Hospital for Chronic Diseases in Bavaria, Germany. She's a pediatrician, endocrinologist, and public health specialist with international experience in Germany, Switzerland, Switzerland and South Africa. Uh, she has also earned research and innovation awards for her work and has transformed two hospitals towards sustainable management that also include a shift on meet free day per week. So please, Eda, the floor is yours. Yeah, hello, everybody. 
Um, thanks, thanks very much, Paula, for the introduction, and I'm really happy to to be here today to join you and talk about our, yeah, well, in a way, achievements um, over the last years. Um, so, um, the title of my talk is "From Meat-Based to Plant-Based Diet: um, Dr Driving Change at Children's Hospital for Chronic Diseases in Bavaria." So we are located south of Munich, very close to the Austrian border. And luckily um, it's, it's a more village structure. So um, there's, there's a lot of nature and um, well, in almost intact environment around us. So, what, what are the facts about meat? So as you know, and probably Bavaria is well known, we are relatively, our nutrition is well, relatively meat-based and, and people think meat is uh, connected to, to health and wealth still. Um, there's a national German recommendation for meat consumption that's three to 500 grams per week. Uh, and the current consumption actually is five, four uh, fold higher than recommended. So um, we consume far too much meat. And when you tell uh, parents and patients and even the staff about that they are often quite surprised. So um, beside the fact that we can uh, do something for our environment or, and for our climate, if we consume uh, less meat, there's also a health benefit. For example, there could be um, deaths avoided, for example, 188. And even eating meat, there, there are a lot of international um, studies pointing out uh, that it increases meat consumption, increases the risk of heart disease, of cancer, of diabetes, and even pneumonia. And that was even, a uh, summary was even published in The Guardian in March this year. And there's a link if you would would like to look it up. So what's also not well known um, is that uh, the 10, uh, the nine tipping points um, for climate, for uh, well, the climate crisis and climate disaster are active. And one um, is one of them and one important is the Amazon rainforest um, that's now degraded uh, mostly for, for meat production, but there are also a lot of other rainforests uh, being um, depleted and destroyed. So that's something we need to act on it. And there was even an article in the Greenpeace uh, magazine uh, some, some weeks ago. Um, well, it's, uh, it's in German, but I think it's quite understandable from the quick picture uh, in a way that we need our forests to breathe and not to produce meat. And so we have to change our way to consume meat. Um, what's also not, not really known, we all uh, know the facts about the uh, Lancet uh, climate countdown, um, that climate change is the biggest global health threat of our century. And that was even published uh, 11 uh, years ago, but still not really, not still not well established even in the medical society. And we also talk about um, the um, yeah, well, side effects of climate change on our health uh, and on our well-being. So, and what what is the side point of it all um, is that uh, Hippocrates announced that food should be our, our medicine. But if you see the, what's on average spent um, per day on food and nutrition in German hospitals, it, it's very really little. Um, so on average, we spend three and a half euro per day per patient. Uh, in our hospital, it's a, it's a bit higher with uh, 4.1 euro per day. And if you talk to uh, hospitals who has transformed, really transformed, formed on almost 100% organic food, it uh, must, well, be more. It's 5.5 more to 6 euro per day that you have to spend on the food product uh, consumption. So why, why I'm talking about that? So we want to, to talk also about um, 
well, transformation and change and change management, because in a way we all know, or most of us know that, that we need to change, but the uh, tricky question is um, how to achieve that. How can we just gain that support and transform the hospitals and the organization um, to uh, establish that needed change? Um, and in a way, what we did, just really uh, normally adhering uh, to the penguin change management uh, model, saying that you have to establish um, an urgency and you can establish that urgency through information and that, that's the reason why I've shown you all the slides about uh, the background information and I think um, it, it's really necessary that everybody is on the same page and knows the facts. And then you have to create a guiding team um, together with your co-worker and, and subordinates, and then also to develop a vision and strategy for the way forward, how you want to move forward, how you want to, um, well, drive the organization and also have to be, uh, well, um, have to, yeah, um, put out and set a time frame. I think that's also quite important that, that you are, um, sensible in which time frame uh, you, you want to make which changes. Um, then you have to communicate um, for understanding and for buy-in, and that also takes time and effort to do it, um, but it's, it's, it's really important to reach out uh, and really reach almost um, everybody in the organization, but also uh, in your peer group uh, and regarding your stakeholders, uh, and um, even, yeah, for example, headquarters of hospitals uh, even uh, need to be involved. Then it's also important that you can empower, I have to empower others to act because uh, you are not a one man or one woman show. So you really have to have your coworkers uh, and people who also drive that change. Then in a way you have to produce short term wins. That's also quite important and for encouragement and uh, to establish the change. Then as the next step, you have to consolidate the gains uh, and produce more change. And quite importantly, um, then you have to create a new culture uh, in, in the hospital or in the organization. So these are quite a lot of steps that are lying ahead of you if you engage in change. And what's also important to do is just apply the PDCA cycle. So in a way you have to plan, identify the problem, discover where and why you need to, to do the change and also plan the improvement and create a quite yeah, outlined plan of action, then involve everybody and execute the plan, check, and you really have to do a check phase and see if the results are as planned and as expected and, expected and uh, as the um, uh, check phase, you also um, have to reflect um, if it works, um, you have to standardize the process, you have to share the learn learning uh, and you have to reflect on what can be changed next. And then you start with the process again. So what we did uh, in, in Geisach, in our hospital, um, these, this is our, in a way, leading team. Um, so there are, the, there are the dietitians and um, the kitchen involved, the chef and the sous chefs. Um, and they need to be 100% uh, uh, on your side and convinced that the change is necessary. Yeah, and there's a picture of our surroundings. So it's quite picturesque and you see the, uh, the Aust Austrian mountains at the back. So what we initially did to gain the short uh, gains and the short wins, um, so we introduced a veggie day um, in the hospital. So every Tuesday from the morning, from breakfast to dinner, everything is just vegetarian. There are, there's no meat involved. Um, so there are also handouts and that's in German, um, uh, why we are doing it, what are the advantages and what are the reasons behind it. Uh, and you, for, for, to achieve that, you really have to have the buy-in 
uh, of, of the people also driving the change. So uh, what we want to do next, what we have discussed uh, and also made a plan um, just to introduce more uh, organic food uh, in our dietary um, uh, menu. Um, and that's, well, that's also a bit related to money because uh, normally uh, organic food is, is more expensive um, than the ordinary food that you can purchase. Yeah, and next steps would be, for example, also to uh, introduce organic spices that are available on the market. Uh, we have now changed um, to, more, to um, buy more regionally uh, organic vegetables and fruits and spe uh, specifically um, so from the regional market also. Uh, we are well to improve our relationships uh, with our uh, local shops. Um, yeah, then we also use organic wheat and regional bread. So all the bakery comes close by. So it's not being transported uh, several hundred kilometers um, across the country um, just to uh, get on, on the table in the hospital, what's often the case in, in other hospitals. Um, yeah, and we are also trying to purchase more, more organic regional meat, um, just also to enhance the animal welfare um, and the well-being of the animals. Um, we also know that the quality of the meat is much better than um, yeah, these um, mass production of meat um, yeah, that's been even needed to be transported six or 700 kilometers um, in, in Germany just to get to us, but it's also yeah, it's also related that uh, organic regional meat is more expensive um, than the cheaper um, the cheaper meat. Uh, another topic is the reduction of food waste. So um, there's really every effort being taken to reduce our food waste. And you can see we, um, over, the, over the last four or five years, we have reduced it by 30%. And for example, that the presentation of our uh, meat-free day um, and what we also do to reduce food waste is that you know, they, uh, you have to pre-order the meals because both buffet meals are um, connected with, with more waste. Uh, and as we want to reduce the, the amount of waste, um, there's a pre-booking system um, of food, so they have to choose in advance staff and, um, and patients what they want to eat the next day or over the week. Yeah, there's also quite a, we, we fortunately have quite a nice canteen, um, very nicely located within, yeah, uh, close, close to nature. You can also sit in the garden and the atmosphere and ambience is, is quite relaxing uh, with sun, sunshine um, and natural light. Um, then we also have changed the way, well, but um, the way how to present our food. There were a lot of, well, there were complaints about the plastic wrapping of food. Um, so we decided to, to buy really nice glass bowls for, for example, for desserts or for salads. Uh, and it's, it's, it really makes such a difference uh, how you eat and how the food is being displayed and uh, served. Um, then we have also introduced a display of grains. So the dietitian can explain the children and the parents, uh, the ingredients for cooking. And interestingly, um, as people and families get used to more pre-cooked uh, and pre-fabricated meals, um, they are not uh, longer used um, to, to know how grains look like and how you can use it. So that's quite useful for teaching and educational purposes. And we also have a nice cooking, um, cooking classes and kitchens. 
uh, where we can cook together, together with a dietitian, and that's also quite useful because, uh, yeah, some some families really don't know how to cook, um, and well, then if they know to cook, then you can enhance the knowledge of healthy cooking, and you can cook together, and it's really a team experiences and um, creates a lot of fun and enthusiasm and. I think that can stick as a positive me memory even to do that at home as well. So as we do have Corona and COVID-19 uh, nowadays, cooking classes have changed. Um, so they are not longer as, intim as intimate as they were before, but still they are uh, nice. And this is a display of vegetables and fruits we are using um, in the hospital um, and uh, there are also tables and uh, posters to educate um, the patients. Yeah, then it's also quite nice when um, your endeavors um, are being promoted elsewhere and the Bavarian television came to us to do a short documentary uh, on our changes and uh, our, on our achievements. And there's, there's a link if you want to uh, look it up, it's, it's still available. Yeah, so in summary, uh, what have we done and what, what, what's in a way the way forward? I think awareness and information is quite important and vital. Um, and you really have to create a vision, for example, from meat-based to plant-based diet, how you can get there. It's, uh, it's a journey um, that takes, takes a while. Um, and you, you do have to engage with the passengers on that journey uh, to, to reach the goal. Um, then, in a way, from the German recommendation, it's more to eat two days meat than just to have two meat-free days. So in a way that's, that's still, still a way to go. So we want to introduce uh, after one wage a day, a second one um, and also introduce more organic food. Um, then expanding our organic food supply um, is really important for us, but there's still that question of who's going to pay for that, the extra costs. Um, then I also found it quite nice that we have removed environmental questionable foods such as tuna. As you all know, tuna is highly endangered and um, quite toxic. For example, there's quite a lot of mercury in the tuna. And we also served, uh, for example, pizza with tuna and we uh, no longer serve tuna at all and have found some replacements for that. Um, yeah, and also, another step is just also intensifying um, the nature-related experiences with the children and the parents uh, by really active gardening and active cooking. And active gardening also means um, that they can experience how, for example, herbs grow, how tomatoes look like, what you can do with broccoli, um, and how you can cook it. And just, um, yeah, have a... Sen sensitive experience about cooking um, also enhances the experiences um, yeah, and the memory effect at home. And the reduction of food waste is also quite important. So the transformational um, process is um, quite multi-layered. So it's not a, a quick fix. So we really have to engage uh, in various aspects from green procurement, uh, to get to a plant-based diet, to reduction of food waste, uh, implementing organic food supply, uh, awareness and information is crucial, uh, locally produced food. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, uh, it looks like uh, Eta is having a technical problem. We will uh, try to get her back soon. Uh, my apologies for this, um, because it was uh, being really interesting. Um, so I'm gonna pass maybe the word to, to Katerina who is part of the dietetics and nutrition team at the Lucieras Hospital in Lisbon. They become one of our members last year and they were one of the winners of the plant-based culinary challenge we organized in 2020. Uh, so please, Katerina, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so, uh, hello, uh, my name is Katerina, uh, I'm a dietitian, and I'm here uh, in representation of the Nutrition and the Dietetics Department from uh, Hospital Luzia de Lisboa. So, um, in our team, uh, wait, because... I can slide the share, okay. In our team, uh, we are five diet dietitians and uh, mainly in our um, daily work, we uh, work as um, clinicals uh, with our patients. However, we have uh, an, an active and important role in uh, collective uh, and public restoration. So mainly um, our uh, sustainable strateg strategies are related uh, with this uh, area. Uh, I will start to talk about uh, um, some food sustainability in our hospital and the uh, sustainability strategies that we have uh, implemented. So about food waste, uh, in hospital setting, uh, we know that the food waste is two or three times bigger when compared with food services as the ones that are present in restaurants, coffees and schools. In our hospital, um, in order to reduce the food waste, we did an optimization of the prescription of diets and we have a closer contact with the, our clients in, in, other, in order to understand their needs, their preferences and difficulties and, uh, and then uh, avoid the, the number of meals that are not consumed and due to the fact they are not adapt to our client or to our patient um, and his clinical condition. In 2016, uh, Hospital dos Líderes de Lisboa associated to a parish council of São Domingos de Benfica that is here in Lisbon, donating the surplus meals daily produced in a hospital. This initiative was carried out through a partnership with the movement Zero Desperdicio, that means zero waste, and uh, nowadays it's, um, it's currently uh, carried out. About seasonal foods. So um, we know that if we choose uh, seasonal foods, we are choosing foods with better nutritional and organi organoleptic characteristics. And we know that we are promoting the local economy and the improvement of uh, the environment. And of course, we are buying uh, food with most affordable prices. Um, in our hospital, we created a dessert menu for patients with uh, seasonal fruits and uh, now we have two menus, one with summer fruits and the other one with winter fruits. Uh, also, uh, in our hospital, we have a vegetarian op option always av available to our patients. So we know that in less years, we have more and more vegetarian uh, patients. And uh, every time they ask for a vegetarian option or uh, that uh, if we know that they are vegetarian, we always um, uh, 
they always uh, know that they are uh, that they have available uh, a vegetarian option. At the same time, in our cafeteria, we have a vegetarian option always available. We have a cafeteria menu for lunch and for dinner, and uh, in the both uh, meals, we always have a, a vegetarian option available. Uh, related to place, plastic consumption, uh, we know that plastic is the packaging material most used by the Portuguese population and that in Portugal, uh, 77,000 tons of plastic are produced every year. So um, uh, now uh, in, in our hospital, we have water jugs, glass cups and water point uh, in order to reduce the plastic of, cons of um, the consumption of plastic cups and bottles. And uh, we replaced the plastic straws that are used in coffee uh, in vending machines for wooden straws. And in vending machines too, we replaced the plastic cups for paper ones. Uh, related to paper consumption, uh, in 2014, we adopt a computer system um, diet that enables informatic re registration of diets uh, in order to replace the world ones that um, were printed on paper. Um, we did an, an, uh, an elimination of paper cutlery sackets in our cafeteria. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to establish again this, the use of these paper cutlery sackets uh, in order to, to respect the um, guidelines that were published in order to reduce the contamination. Uh, about recycling, uh, we know that only 38% of urban waste generated in Portugal is recycled. So in our cafeteria, we implemented an uh, echo points in order to promote uh, the, the recycling for, for our play, patients and, and clients and uh, for our colleagues. In 2020, we had some, we had established some challenges. Uh, however, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as I said it um, previously, um, we had to, uh, we had some, uh, we had a, a hospital restructuration, and we had some um, COVID-19 patients in our uh, uh, hospital. So we had to. Um, to use takeaway plastic boxes to serve the meals. Uh, so um, in last year, we spent much more plastic in uh, than uh, another regular year. So for 2020, we have some new challenges that we hope to be able to achieve. Uh, I will uh, say uh, some, of, some of them that uh, is take, uh, replace the, the takeaway plastic boxes for more ecological alternatives. Um, use recycled paper in the produc production of wipes. They are used in the trays to serve the meals to our clients. Uh, use recyclable paper napkins uh, for uh, the internment and uh, for our cafeteria. Reduce the use of individual dose packs and uh, review the menus in the cafeteria in order to reduce the food options based on red meat and increasing uh, the number of dishes um, with vegetable pro protein source. So about um, European healthcare, uh, health cul culinary contest, uh, we were challenged by a girl that works uh, with us in our company and that belongs to the Department of Sustainability and uh, in Innovative. Um, and she challenged us to participate uh, in this contest. We accepted, of course, um, because uh, we thought this was um, a really, a really interesting initiative. We are nutritionists, and we know about the importance of sustainability. So uh, we we thought uh, about this project project as an an opportunity to bring this this subject to to our hospital. So to participate in this contest, we had to submit a recipe um, that had to be um, plant-based and ha that had to reflect the principles of health and sustainability. And we had to promote the dish on social media. Uh, we had to some uh, rules that we had to um, fulfill. Um, the entry, our recipe, as I said, it had to be uh, plant-based, had to be uh, replicable for uh, other hospitals, must contain at least one qualifying legume seed or nut, and must be served in our uh, facil facility on World Food Day of 2020. 
uh, about our uh, experience. So um, uh, the most challenging part was to think about uh, a recipe that um, at the same time uh, that, that could be uh, vegetarian, uh, plant-based, and at the same time tasty and interesting um, to our uh, colleagues and to our uh, clients. Um, we thought about a vegetarian kebab, that it's our uh, recipe, and um, we uh, created this recipe with a chef. Uh, in our daily routine, uh, we work uh, with a company that is responsible to um, create and to prepare uh, and cook all the, the, the meals that uh, are served to our clients and to our patients. And Chef Mark is the one that is responsible for the kitchen. Um, and he was uh, really... Um, Glad when we uh, invited him to um, create this recipe with us. We were the ones that uh, think uh, in, about uh, all of the ingredients. He was the one that make uh, the recipe possible and appellative. And um, this is our uh, recipe. It was a uh, work team. Here are our uh, uh, ingredients, the ingredients of our recipe. And here the preparation mode. Uh, so, on uh, 16 October of the 2020, the World Food Day, um, we um, create a poster uh, uh, where uh, we um, um, make, um, uh, create our recipe and our um, uh, participation in the, in the contest. And we provide our vegetarian, our recipe in our cafeteria as a vegetarian option. At the same time, uh, we um, made the social media publications uh, about our participation in the contest and about the creation of uh, our uh, recipe. And the feedback from uh, our colleagues was really, really good. We had, um, we were really congratulated. And after uh, that, the, that day, uh, some of our colleagues asked us to put this option um, again in uh, our cafeteria as a vegetarian option. So I think we we made it uh, successfully. Um, later, the Paolo was the one that um, made uh, that gave us the, the, notice that, the notice that we were one of the winners of the contest together with the hospital in Barcelona. Uh, we were really happy and uh, of course we didn't expect the win, uh, but um, uh, as I said it previously, uh, this was our first experience in a contest like this and to win was um, uh, really good for us and of course um, we know uh, the importance and we care about, about uh, sustainability, so this was uh, a really great opportunity to bring the, um, the, this subject to our hospital and to show that we can have um, sustainability food that can be healthy, that can be good to our envir environment and at the same time um, tasty. Uh, and uh, I think that's that's all. Um, I want to thank uh, Paola for all the the, the the support that she gave us during all the process. I want to thank uh, for the opportunity to participate in a contest like this. And uh, I want to thank uh, the opportunity to, to being uh, here in this uh, webinar, um, talking a, a, little bit, a little bit about our um, sustainable stra strategies that we have implemented in our hospital and in, about our experience uh, in the contest. Uh, thank you uh, so much and we can wait to um, participate uh, in another initiatives uh, like this. Thank you so much. And if you have some questions, um, feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Irina. It's uh, always a pleasure to collaborate with uh, healthcare.com members. Um, I have, uh, so there are some questions coming, uh, but uh, we will take them at the end of presentations. Now, uh, it uh, women's back, so I'm gonna give her the, the, um, yeah, the word again, uh, so she can finish uh, her presentation. Okay. Eda, you can share your screen again. Yeah. I think we left it in a, a slide number 21. 21? 
Yes. Okay. So can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Can you see my slides? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So let's see to go to 21. Mm -hmm. So that's where I left you. Yeah, uh, we cannot see your screen right now. Okay. Very funny here. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see it now? Now we can see it, yes. Now you can see it? Yeah. Okay. So, and you see 21, the way forward? Yes. Okay, so sorry about that. <laughs> it's not so much left. So um, I think crucial is really to raise a lot of awareness and information to patients, but also medical staff and staff at the hospital. And to pursue and create the vision, for example, in our case, from meat-based to plant-based diet. So it's, it's, it's still a very long journey um, and you have to keep your passengers engaged. Um, then introducing one wedge a day was the first step, but introducing another one would be the next. Um, and in a way, the aim would be just to have two uh, meet, meet days per week in the hospital. Then expanding to organic food uh, and expanding the organic food supply. Uh, yeah, what we did... Um, just over the last weeks, also remove environmental questionable food, for example, tuna uh, that is highly endangered um, and also have, has a lot of high toxic substances such as mercury. So we no longer uh, serve tuna, for example, on pizzas and in salads. Um, then also intensifying our nature-related experiences with the children and the parents. Um, yeah, just to have some hands-on approach and also in active gardening and also um, active cooking and community cooking. And then uh, what was also introduced and mentioned um, the re further reduction of the food waste. So, and in a way, the transformational process is quite multi-layered, just from green procurement to, a, to get to plant-based diet, you have to go through various steps uh, by the reduction of food waste, introduction of organic food, awareness and information, uh, enhance locally produced food, um, do cooking classes and, and the gardening. Um, yeah, uh, if you want to, to read something up on it, that's our experiences. Um, or my experiences in, in South Africa at the University Hospital did there. That was also another article on green hospitals in Deutsche Erzeblatt in, in, in Germany. Um, yeah, we also received a Gold Leadership Award from Healthcare Without Harm. Um, it was also really nice. Um, yeah, to yeah to to get uh, the achievements also displayed. Um, and, and serve in a way as a, as, a, as a role model for other hospitals to achieve that. And um, in our uh, hospitals um, of our headquarter, we are now all engaging in, in green hospitals. I think that's, that's quite an achievement for that time period. Um, so as we are all uh, in the corona and COVID-19 pandemic now, we're just looking forward just to get back to normal. Um, but I doubt that, well, uh, there's, there's little doubt that we re really get back to normal. I think there will be a new normal uh, and the climate challenge and the climate change and climate crisis uh, will give us a lot of um, things that needs to be changed and we need to engage to get the system transformed and changed. 
So thank, thanks very much for your attention. Thanks for listening. I'm really sorry about the interruption. Um, and if you want to ask some questions, just uh, drop me an email or just um, send it in the chat. Thanks very much. Thank you a lot, Eda. It was really insightful. There is actually some questions for you, so please uh, be mind with me. Um, also, thank you all uh, for being with us uh, despite these technical problems. Uh, this is the problem with technology these days. Um, just um, finally, I'm going to give the word to Christina. Uh, you will probably know her from other webinar support or events we have organized. Christina has been responsible for the economic and logistical management of the hospital in SIG uh, supply. Uh, it's located in Vienna and the hospital serves approximately 2,600 meals a day. Uh, Christina has been involved as well in several projects such as Umbesa and Naturlich Gutelle. And Christina aims to strengthen sustainable nutrition for the entire Vienna Hospital Association. And as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, today she will present her experience in terms of preventing food waste, uh, particularly. So, Christina, the floor is yours. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can hear you now. So, and you see my uh, screen? Yes, perfectly. Okay, okay. Um, so, good afternoon. My name is Christina, and I'm from Vienna Clinic Kitzing. Uh, we are part of the Vienna Health Association. Uh, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, the clinic Hitzing provides around a uh, thousand uh, patients and around 500 employees daily. Uh, during the pandemic, we are providing uh, around uh, 600 patients and uh, 300 uh, staff uh, daily. Um, by the regulations in the health um, care system at the moment, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, the clinic was opened in uh, 1913, so the building structure is really old and some buildings are uh, listed. We work with uh, fresh food. The food is filled um, in containers, like a gastronomy standard. We do not have a tray system. Um, uh, Hitzing does not have a central uh, building area, so we supply the individual departments with trucks. Um, we are part of the Vienna Health Association, uh, with around 11,000 beds in clinics and care homes. All clinics have been certified organic since 2008. The entire association has a food budget of uh, about um, 18 uh, million uh, euros uh, per year. And in Hitzing, we um, uh, have a budget about uh, 2 million euros per year. Our statistics in use of organic food is increasing um, and our uh, sustainability efforts are successful. Um, we have been striving to reduce food waste for many years and have already implemented several uh, measures, which is also reflected in our statistics. Um, monitoring food waste is an important issue and an 
in an ideal sustainability system, and it uh, needs a, a sensitive um, uh, way uh, to protect. Our activities are um, uh, in, in food waste in um, our um, Um, we are monit monitoring um, a res recipe pool and the portion size. Um, we um, went to uh, to the wards um, and and. Uh, not only the production and the supply of food, also the needs of patients um, uh, must be considered. You can see our statistics until uh, 2019. Uh, 2020 is not finished uh, yet. Um, I think it's always important to find out why food waste occurs, including why patients do not eat, and many aspects as there are um, medical reasons, um, food distribution, aesthetic um, or personal feelings, and the administra administration uh, reasons are um, important. Uh, for myself, the uh, pyramid of needs is a good template where our food stands in everyday hospital life. So um, certainly we also have to train our staff on the wards accordingly and mediate to importance of this topic to them. And our goals are the optimization of the ordering system, um, uh, the food use in general, and information measures. What can be done on the ward to encourage patients to eat and prevent malnutrition, if necessary? Um, there is only a collection of ideas because uh, it's so much more, but um, for me it's, it's uh, important to say uh, stimulate the appetite. The motoric freedom is a, is a very important issue. Uh, difficulties of swallowing, um, eating too hot, too cold. Um, trouble-free eating, uh, appearance, taste, and smell. Uh, these are the aspects. Um, our food waste is brought to a, a biogas plant for processing um, uh, two times a week. What are the important measures to appetizing arrangement and risk distribution on the ward is carrying out by the um, uh, station staff. Um, like you can see um, how we um, work on, on the wards. Um, A study um, in various organizations has shown that an average um, of food is sent back. You see um, uh, uh, around 30% soup and salads and around 20% uh, uh, main courses. So it's, it's a really high, high rate and it's necessary to um, consider few future menu systems because eating habits have uh, simply changed over the years and the typical menu of soup, main course and desserts is no longer state of the art. Another important issue 
um, is the return of bakery products from uh, breakfast um, or uh, dinner. Um, they are often difficult to cal calculate because they can hardly be stored and it depends on the patient's appetite. So how does our monitoring system work? Uh, we have been working with the initiative United Against Waste since 2017. The data is collected in a relatively flat process. On the one hand, uh, the output quantities, and on the other hand, uh, the waste quantities. Um, these two are compared. Um, In, in a process. So there is one of um, examples for reporting. Um, I cannot give an, any information about the method um, of calculation as uh, this is the, done by the initiative in Austria by, the company, by a company named Tatwort. There is a reporting every six months, so we can see if we, uh, um, um, if we must react to the data. And there are, um, um, in this initiative, um, there are hospitals, care homes, uh, canteens, um, um, and, and um, it's like, um, you see, it's it's a high range from bottom up, um, and um, uh, hospitals and nursing homes usually have higher loss rates than, for example, um, canteens. So uh, to present the individual measures here would go be beyond the scope of the today's webinar. So um, there is a, um, a link to, to see uh, what um, they do uh, with, with the initiative. Uh, what we have learned so far um, is um, it's an important um, goal to save food and uh, it's, it's important to have tools and methods to um, collect the data and find potentials. Um, so you can also find my contact and as a clinic and as an organization we benefit uh, from this analysis because we can derive and implement individual measures uh, so that's what <laughs> i think i'm in time um, thank you very much and stay healthy thank you very much christina uh, yeah, we are good in time. We had uh, some questions. Um, so I will invite you to maybe turn on your camera so people can see you as well. Um, we are going to start by a question made by Ina for you, Eda. Uh, thank you so much for this interesting presentation. Uh, do you think that ecologic food, so meaning organic food, and education for sustainable food is possible for inpatients too? I think it's for me. No, I don't know. Uh, for Eta. Ah, okay. Not sure is there. Um. um. Hey there, are you there? Okay, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry, can you just repeat the question for me? 
Yes, sorry. I've seen it like uh, you are answering now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was typing in something. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Do you think like organic food and education for sustainable food is possible for impatience too? Um, yeah, definitely. I think we, we need to move to this side. And interestingly, when, for example, when I'm on ward rounds, yeah, um, and for example, there's, there's, a, there's a talk, I've given a talk beforehand, or we discussed the topic beforehand. Um, patients are quite grateful if you talk to them about food. Um, and um, still the knowledge about food and food systems and sustainability um, is, is currently not well developed. Um, and yeah, I think we have to find a way to engage with our patients uh, also and to do more, more educational work. And it can, it can be done from various sides. As a doctor, I think doctors also needs to, need to engage and, and educate people about it. Uh, and def definitely nurses because they're working closer together with the patients and, and but also dietitians. I think that dietitians are a great tool huh, to engage uh, with patients. And for example, in pediatrics, they have uh, multiple allergies and any and and a lot of thing that that needs a dietetic approach. So I think dietitians are a good uh, tool to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a follow up as well of this question, um, so the diet prescriptions to patients. Uh, do you advise and promote sustainable diets? And if so. Uh, do you have a standard operating procedure for it, or which standard are you implementing? Um, well, we have the dietitians do have a standard operational procedure for uh, especially when they're food allergies um, and sustainability. Well, that that's currently just developing a standard operational procedure for for more sustainability, um, but one of it really has to do with, with information and education and, and even lectures on, on the topic. And we do that um, every time patients are arriving, but we, we are so fortunate that patients stay for quite some time in the hospital for two to four to six weeks. So we can really engage with the patients and the families. Um, and that also probably has a good sustainable outcome because it's not just spot on and then they leave again as in acute hospitals. Um, so you can really engage and educate people over this time period. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eda. Um, yeah, Katarina, uh, if you could also answer this question about sustainable diet promotion. Um, um, yes, of course, I'm just uh, reading the, the question. Um, so, um, in our um, patients, like the, the ones that are uh, in the internment, um, we, we don't direct, directly uh, promote sustainable diets. However, we have um, appointments with clients um, weekly. So, uh, of course, with, with that type of, pi of patients, we promote sustainable diets and uh, we give advices to, to, um, to promote um, more uh, the more vegetarian um, dishes and um, yes, not not in the hospital properly with the patients that are uh, interned, but with the ones that uh, come to us uh, in uh, appointments and uh, of course with the, our colleagues and with our clients that go to our cafeteria, we want to promote that uh, sustainable diets. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank you. I hope uh, that's yeah. clear mm -hmm. uh, There's also some questions related to the two Becky days a week that you have now, Eda, and maybe this could also be answered by you, Katarina. Uh, how also the staff reacted to this decision or implementing more plant-based uh, menus, let's say. 
Um, so we don't have like a, a vegetarian day. We have just like always the option for people to choose a, veg a vegetarian option. So, uh, or a vegetarian dish. We have like always the option of uh, red meat or uh, other uh, type of meat, fish and the vegetarian option. And I'm uh, new in a hospital. I'm here just uh, since the, the last year. But according to my colleagues, um, we always had the, the vegetarian option uh, available to our clients and to our um, patients. So uh, I think this, this is an, uh, not a new idea and a new project. We already had it. So um, our, our um, uh, challenge uh, is to um, uh, have not just one uh, option, but more uh, than one option in our cafeteria uh, for, for people to choose not, uh, not, not have only one option and then uh, and have two or more. Um, and uh, of course, maybe one day we can have like a vegetarian day. Um, we hope, but uh, for now we just have like that option and we always have that available, but not uh, like a vegetarian day. No. Mm -hmm. Something to add, Eta, in that regard? Um, yeah. Um, the hospital, the hospital offered for for quite some time, for several years, always a vegetarian option, and the patient could choose. But but last year really decided, um, yeah, after information and awareness and a lot of discussion and talks, and the, just getting the guiding team together, um, we really decided just to have one vegetarian day only. So where is no meat available? And as I told you, Bavaria is really meat-based. So that was a really uh, a, a real step, a huge step for us and for the hospital and a really, a really huge commitment uh, to change the way how we serve uh, and see food in, in the hospital. Um, and yeah, that's, that was quite an interesting experience to do. But um, it's, it, it really takes some time also to, to talk to people, to convince people. But I think it's worth the effort. And um, you have to do your PDCA several times. Um, but I think it's still worth doing it because you, in a way, then change the way things are being seen and analyzed and um, just the whole perspective. Um, and I think it's, it's worth engaging in it. Mm -hmm. How was the, the feedback? Was good from uh, your colleagues and the clients um, to yeah. just have the vegetarian option for that day? So we, we, we had a lot of discussion before we started it and it was always, you can't do it, there's too much resistance, people, um, because you always get these feedback from patients, we were very unhappy about it and all the whole blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. in a way it didn't happen, yeah? So that it just, um, um, and interestingly, the dietitians and, and the kitchen introduced it very smoothly. They just, um, they didn't even announce it. So from one day to the other, there was just a vegetarian meat a meal and that was it. And in a way that was really a, yeah, I think it was well done, yeah? And then we communicated later and saying, well, have you noticed? Yeah. <laughs> we okay, don't yes. serve any meat uh, on, a, on a Tuesday. And I think that was really cleverly, really cleverly done, yeah? yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, there's always a bit of, there's always somebody who will complain about something, but yes. you always have those patients where you will, yes. can never be 100% right. But mm -hmm. there's very really little, really, really little resistance about it, interestingly. Good. So you expect just a full blown up system and, mm -hmm. and quite a lot of um, complaints, but it, in a way it doesn't happen, yeah? Uh, okay. And there's always this um, notion that you you will face a lot of resistance, but in fact, if you really do it, um, it just it it goes very quickly back to to the new normal. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I I really like these interactions among us. <laughs> uh, Christina, maybe one question for you as well. Um, 
So it's a really interesting experience uh, from what you told us. What do you think will be the next steps? Um, the next steps are really difficult because I think uh, our food waste um, quantities uh, will be increasing and not decreasing um, due to the pandemic. It's it's really it's really um, difficult uh, to plan some um, uh, things. Uh, and um, our patients, uh, we are um, we are um, a COVID clinic with with about um, uh, ninety uh, beds for um, uh, COVID uh, positive uh, patients. So it's it's really difficult because they uh, uh, do not want to eat or. Um, um, they are on 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 a emergency ward, and so it's 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 a little bit tricky, yeah. And I think we will struggle um, uh, with the pandemic um, um, uh, a lot more month uh, further, and so. I don't know. I hope um, we can um, we can um, collect um, the food uh, waste um, as we uh, uh, do uh, before the pandemic, uh, because all it's always um, um, an issue about the. Um, collect uh, um, collecting food waste uh, from the uh, COVID patients because um, they say it's um, like the influenza virus, and so we we should collect that uh, in an extra um, 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 collector. So I don't know. It's it's a little bit. Uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed, the pandemic, I think it brings a lot of challenges as well yeah. uh, for everyone, but also for the healthcare sector. Uh, but yeah, hopefully when we come back to normal, uh, you could still work on the great initiatives you are all uh, doing. And yeah. So um, just to conclude, um, because I know we are running out of time, and uh, thank you all for staying. Um, to conclude, I would like to highlight that yeah, food uh, should nourish people and support both healthy lifestyles and a healthy planet. Uh, for that, the healthcare sector is uniquely positioned to start the conversation about how these issues that we have been discussing can be addressed. In fact, as we have learned in this webinar, hospitals and other healthcare facilities across Europe are already changing the way that patients and employees eat and think about food. Um, but it is important nonetheless that yeah, we continue raising awareness and mobilizing and inspiring others to begin on their paths towards sustainable and healthy food. Looking ahead is vital, uh, and we need to see healthy food as a synonymous of sustainable food, not only for the well-being of patients, but also for the wider community and the planet. So healthcare without harm is looking forward to collaborate and learn from all of you. Uh, so please visit our website, sign up to our newsletters and find out about how you can get involved in the movement towards healthy and sustainable food in healthcare. And yeah, thank you as well to our participants and the speakers for participating. Uh, it's been a pleasure and um, yeah, keep sharing your experiences. Have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.